Hello students, once again. In the previous video, I have given an overview of this chapter, the best Christmas present in the world. And I have also said that I have made this chapter short in my copy so that you can understand it properly while I will explain it line by line. So I have given some word meanings on the board and you will note down these word meanings on your copy and at the same time you will note down the word meanings which are there in your book. So all the word meanings after noting down on your copy you will get by heart and you will learn it. So I have made it short in my copy of this chapter and the things are there one after another accordingly. So I will describe it line by line so that you can get the idea of it. So the narrator found a junk shop in Bridport, a roll top desk that is made of oak. So the narrator or the author went to a Bridport, one of the place and there he purchased a desk, roll top desk from a junk shop. That desk was made of oak tree and it was in bad condition. The condition of the you know desk was not good, it was in bad condition. Some of the you know uh, marks were there, barn marks on it, and it was of old fashioned. But it was cheap rather than others. There were so many desks, and it was the cheapest than others. He thought he could restore it, so he bought it. He thought that he could restore it, and that's why he has bought it and began to work on it on Christmas Eve. After he purchased this, he started to work on it. What sort of work? He started to you know, work of repairing on it. Means as it was not properly you know, uh, repaired, that it was uh, means somewhat old, that's why he bought it and started working on it for repairing. The narrator thought because of water and fire, it had got damaged. The narrator thought that it has got damaged. There is a reason behind it. The reason is uh, means it had got damaged because of water and fire. He opens the drawers, but the last one was stuck first. There were so many drawers in it. And he opened all the drawers except the last one because it, it stuck tight or it stuck fast so uh, he, he had to give a lot of he had to put a lot of efforts to open it when he opened it he found a secret drawer in it so when after putting a lot of efforts he opened it he found another drawer in it he reached in and took out a small black tin box. When he reached inside it or when he saw inside it, then he found a small black tin box in it. So it was shallow tape. That means the tin box was shallow taped and on the top of it there was a piece of lined notepaper and on the top of it there was a, a small piece of lined notepaper. Okay and something was written on it. So something was written on it in shaky handwriting. Shaky handwriting means in you know scribbling handwriting, bad handwriting, something was written on it. So what was written? Jim's last letter received January 25, 1915. This was written. Jim's last letter received uh, January 25, 1915. To be buried with me when the time comes. These lines were written on it. That means it is uh, clear that in, in, in it there is a letter Okay, and on it, uh, this uh, writing was written in Shakti handwriting. The narrative knew that it was not right to open the box. So, as narrator, you know, knew that it was not right to open the box as it was of not him. So, that's why, uh, means whatever was there, letter was there inside it, it was of someone. So, it, it will not be good to open it. Okay, some months later. <clears throat> but his curiosity got better of his scruples. But his curiosity got better. His scruples means his hesitations. So he hesitated to open it 
at the beginning but later on because of his uh, lot of curious you know lot of curiousness he got to open it he in so inside the box there was an there was an envelope the address was written on it so inside the box there was an envelope there was an envelope envelope means uh, means the you know the paper wrapped on it the address was written on it so on the envelope an address was uh, written okay, he took out the letter and unfolded it he took out he took out and unfolded it means he opened it it was written in a pencil and dated at the top december 26 1914 it was written uh, by pencil and the date was also written on it december you know 26 1914 so this was the first unit in the second unit i will go through so in the second unit we uh, will see that jim macpherson has sent a letter to his wife connie macpherson and whatever is written in the letter we will come to know and that letter was received by the author we know that he hesitated to open it but his curiosity because of his curiosity he opened it and got to know everything what was there inside the letter so let's see what was there inside the letter in the letter jim macpherson wrote to his dearest wife to who to whom jim macpherson has written to his dearest wife okay when he was in the battlefield fighting against you know the german soldiers as i have already mentioned in the previous video that the two you know sides okay one side is of german soldier another side english soldier they were fighting against each other okay in the first world war in 1914 so he has sent a letter to his dearest to his dearest wife mentioning the happiest time about some wonderful happening he mentioned some happiest time about some wonderful happening so definitely there will be something behind the happiest you know wonderful happening so what would be that so we will come to know that why for him it was the happiest moment he found a beautiful morning ever as happy or cheerful as a christmas morning should be so as a christmas morning normally we uh, we can, can see that it was very cheerful and pleasant and like that he found the beautiful morning you know, like christmas morning okay it was not he or it was not g macpherson first it was the german soldier who waved the white flag from the opposite trenches so it was not g macpherson it was german soldier who you know uh, waved flag from the opposite trenches opposite trenches means from the opposite you know ditches where they are staying while fighting so one of the german soldier uh, started waving flags once all of a sudden by seeing this he was surprised to see, you know that why in this moment in the battle moment the war moment you know they are waving the flags this is the sign of goodness so that's why he, he was surprised then they were calling out happy christmas tommy tommy is the name of english soldier you know and they were calling out happy christmas means they were bidding this german soldier were bidding you know happy christmas to english soldier happy christmas the british soldier also surpri were surprised and they shouted back the same you know same to you free same to you the british soldier also surprised and they also bid same that same to you that means they also bid the happy christmas the narrator thought it would be over again over here the narrator thought they it would be over okay they have bid it happy christmas merry christmas okay it will be ended here but the you know story hasn't ended here story of the battlefield hasn't ended here so one of them got up and start waving white flag say not to shoot so one of the german soldier again got up and he say not to shoot and started waving okay waving white flag and no one uh, did means no one shoot he or jim mcperson told the another man that it was a trick but it was not actually actually jim mcperson had a doubt that it might be or it could be 
you know the trick of the jama soldiers okay that's why they are showing they are they are waving their flags you know to deceive them and kill them but it was not actually the trick one of the jama soldiers was waving a bottle above his head saying it was a christmas day to me so one of the jama soldier he was waving a bottle above his head and uh, saying the christmas day to me okay the soldier of both the countries meeting each other the soldier of both the countries meeting started meeting each other in the battlefield okay in the middle of the war and they were making peace in the middle of the war they started meeting each other then they were making peace he cannot imagine that moment that freeze officer hands would bait him so he means that the g macpherson he could not imagine that that moment freeze officer would come in front of him and bait him merry christmas and also told him that he is from dusseldorf means a uh, german officer came in front of him and bade him merry christmas and also told him that he is from you know dusseldorf okay from that place he belongs to then he means then jim macpherson also bade him merry christmas and smile he smiled means hands up smiled and said that he knew the place when he heard that he belonged to dorset so german officer also said that he knew the place where he belonged to where the english soldier or jim macpherson belonged to he belonged to dorset then they shared their food to each other they shared their food to each other and they talked but he he means to say i mean a british soldier jim macpherson found he also can speak well english then when they are talking to each other then jim macpherson found that the german soldier uh, speaks english very well so he told that he learned english from school and reading books so when jim macpherson wanted to know from where he learned those english then he answered that he learned english from his school and reading books his favorite he also informed that his favorite writer was thomas hardy okay and his favorite book was far from the madding crowd he also said his uh, favorite poet and his favorite book and they talked many more so after that they talked a lot he had a wife and a six month son he also shared that he has a wife and a six month son okay when uh, he looked over no man's land when he when he means there the jim macpherson looked over no man's land no man's land in the open space of the battlefield okay they were talking smoking laughing drinking eating okay no man's land they were huddled of huddles of khaki and gray everywhere means when g macpherson saw in the no man's land okay they were huddles means then he may instantly you know, the people are you know the soldiers are started you know meeting each other so they huddled together in a place meeting each other so all over no man's land they were talking so all over no man's land where the where nobody goes the open space the people started talking they smoking they laughing they drinking they are eating okay so these things are happening that means they are enjoying their time by talking the laughing eating and drinking they are meeting okay the enemy in this way they are you know making peace in the battlefield hans ulf and he shared christian cake a christmas cake hans ulf and he shared christian christmas cake at that time then someone he doesn't know they make goalpost by great coats dumped in piles then someone from jaman soldier okay they do not know from where he has come and he has come with the ball football okay and they have made a goalpost after that by great coats by their coats they have made a goalpost 
okay by their great coats damp in piles making the you know the great coats damp in piles they have met the met the goal post after that the game started they cheered and clapped okay and it made the game so exciting so this freeze freeze means here the german soldier name of german soldier okay smile here the german officer smile at jim mcpherson and said they should resolve the war by playing football match so german soldier said that we should not uh, fight or we should not you know uh, kill each other we should resolve our problem by playing games okay by playing football match he also said no one dies in football match so that german soldier said that a german officer said that no one dies in the football match okay no children becomes orphan or no wives become widowed so no children become orph orphan no you know wives become widowed he say that he would prefer cricket then they could be sure of, could be sure of winning means g macpherson said that uh, he would prefer cricket if he would prefer cricket then definitely they could be they could be sure of winning means in play, instead of football match if it had been cricket definitely they would have won the match g macpherson said in that they loved all together okay they loved all together they you know was the game they were talking they were not playing actually they were watching the game so the freeze won the goal to one so freeze at last the german soldiers won the match by 2-1 but hens demanded that their goals were wider than the other but one funny thing is there hens demanded okay and not the you know the british soldier one of the british soldier demanded that their goals were wider than theirs so it wasn't quick fair it wasn't quite fair means because of their goal post wider uh, they have won the match this was the demand of british soldier okay thus they ended the football match happily thus they ended the football match happily <coughs> So hence say take care uh, to G Macpherson he saluted and walked away from him he drifted back towards towards the trenches means at the end of the game they drifted back towards the trenches and that night they all back to him the gout started carol song carol and exchange carol so that night they started the carol song and the in and in exchange of them they also started miss you know british soldier also started carol song there was peace and silence since then he ended his letter saying that this war will be a distant and terrible memory by christmas time next year he knows how much both the armies long for peace he assured that he is going to meet our son so at the end of the later jim macpherson assured that he is going to meet his wife very soon so in the third unit you need we are going to uh, see this thing so the narrator folded the letter and keep it into the envelope as i have said that now narrator has got the letter so till now the narrator has read the letter and this was the fact inside the letter so after that narrator what a what did narrator do the narrator folded the letter and keep it into the envelope again narrator means folded it and keep it into the envelope he went to bridport there he was in search of the whereabouts of mrs macpherson so he went to bridport so he went to bridport in search of mrs uh, macpherson because he wanted to uh, means return the letter in the hand of uh, mrs brickfors and mrs uh, macpherson okay that's why he was in search of whereabouts of her where she stayed when he asked a boy he said house he said house number 
Then he asked an old man, okay, he replied that he knew Mrs. McPherson. When he asked the old man, he knew that where Mrs. McPherson lives, okay. But the house got fire and she got burned a little. But the house got fire, but the house where she lived got fire and she also got burned a little. The fireman had got her out in time. The fireman came and got her out in time as her house got fire. She was in a nursing home now. She told, she, she was in a nursing home now. He told him Burlington House on the Dorchester Road on the other side of town. Okay. He found Burlington House nursing home. Matron took him into a conservatory. Matron was there in the nursing home. She took him to the conservatory. Okay. There an old lady was sitting in, in the in a wheelchair. In the wheelchair, an old lady was sitting. She had silver white hair. Okay. She was gazing out at the garden. Uh, <clears throat> she, he said hello happy christmas after that he said meeting when he meets her he said hello to her happy christmas bid her happy christmas connie then he opened the tin box and gave the letter to her then he opened the tin box and gave the letter to her then uh, that was the moment her eyes lit up with recognition so that's the moment her eyes lit up okay with recognition and she feel overjoyed she feel overjoyed meeting her as if uh, means it seemed to her that she met her husband then he explained about the desk about how he had found it so when he explained about uh, how he found the desk then she uh, believed that it was it was uh, her husband no other than her husband for some time she said nothing but took the letter from him suddenly she took his hand and her eyes were filled with tears suddenly she took his hand and her eyes her eyes were filled with tears as I have said that uh, as soon as she got the letter from him and she believed that the man standing in front of her was her husband okay so in that moment her eyes filled with tears she said that she was supposed to come home by christmas she said that she was supposed to he was supposed to come by christmas she said and here you are the best christmas present in the world so she last of all got her husband back as he considers him her husband and that's why it was the happiest moment for her you know that she has got her husband and this was the best christmas present for her but actually that man was not the husband okay her husband uh, had been killed in the in the war but as the man had not given his introduction and he has said about the days and everything that way she believed that she, she believed him as if the man was her husband so in this way the story ended and she got the you know the best christmas present and i think you have understood it so that's all for this story so thank you.